Hi, I'm Taylor with Domo. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a loop in a workflow. I'm going to start today by having a message start for our workflow so that we can manually start it. In a loop, we need to know which index we're at or which iteration we're on in the loop. So I'll start by adding a service task and set up my index to initialize it for the workflow. To do this, I'm going to use our Domo math package. You don't have to use this one if you want to create your own custom one, but I'm going to use our number addition function in here, which is just going to add zero to zero to start our index at zero. Let's rename this to create index. Then what I'm going to do is maybe I want to fetch some data from a data set and I want to loop over um, a data set of users and take action on each user. So then I'm going to create another service task. This one is going to query a data set based off of a SQL statement that we pass into it. I'm going to use our Domo data sets package. And in here, I'm going to search for a query data set and convert. I'll select this function. You'll pass in a data set ID and a SQL statement. You can do something as basic as select all from data. And we're going to output our result to a variable in our workflow so we can use it later. This is our data set response. And we're going to rename this to query user data set. So now that I have my list of objects that I want to loop over, let's set what the length of that list is so that we can check it in our loop so that we don't have an infinite loop. We're going to add another service task. I'm going to search for domo arrays. And in here, I'm going to get the list of object length function. We're going to pass in our data set response and we're going to output that to a variable called data set response length. And length of data set. All right. So now that I've set up my index, I've got my list that I want to loop over and I have the length of that list. We're about ready to start looping. So Say you want to take action on each row in that data set. What we're going to do is we're going to set the current user. To do this, we have a function in our Domo general utilities to index into an object list. This is going to take our data set response and our current index and return us the current user object that we can then take action on. We'll call that get current user. Now what we're gonna do is you can add some shapes here, some service tasks uh, to take action on that user. But for my demo, I'm just gonna increment the index and continue looping. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a conditional gateway and this is going to check if there's any more rows to check on the data set. If there's no more rows, I'm just going to end. Fix these lines a bit. We'll say, no, there are no more users. We'll end here. If there are more users, we're going to increment our index using the same Domo math package. Addition number. This time, we're going to take in our index as an input. We're going to add one to it, and we're going to output the result to our index. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to draw a line from here to our get current user. And 
and it'll continue on there. For our conditions, what we can do is we can have the no be a default, so that if this equates to false, it'll go down this path. And here what we can do is we'll add a new rule for the index, and we'll say as long as the index is less than our variable, which is our data set response length. So I'll add that rule. Each time it goes in the loop, it's going to increment our index, get the current user, keep going until it's gone through all the users, and then it'll end once you're finished. Now, obviously, this is a simple use case. All this is really doing is looping over. Uh, but usually, once you get the current user, you can take action on it afterwards. You can do some decision making and stuff like that. So loops are really powerful in a workflow. We use them all the time. Uh, to reiterate, what we do is we initialize our index. We query the data or do whatever you want with the list. Maybe the list is passed into the start. We get the length of that list so that we know when we can stop looping over to not create an infinite loop. And then we take action inside that loop. We'll have a conditional gateway to check the length. If it, the length has met our index, we know we're done. If not, we'll continue to take action and increment our index inside the loop to get the next user. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching.